I'll get one more back. All right. All right, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Producer's Guide to Digital Media, where we're going to talk about everything podcast producer, digital producer, what that all means, and uh, what we all do in the industry. So um, how's everyone doing? Everyone having a good con? Woo! Dragon Con, good to be around people again. Good yes. to talk. And uh, we have a really good group of panelists here to uh, discuss what um, producers do. So let's go ahead and actually do a quick intro, background, and uh, roadmap to how you got to... Um, where you are and um, what you do. Let's start right here. Oh, let me pull this closer. Cause I talked loud, but also still. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bar, the Critical Bar across all social media channels. I'm an active vocalist, tabletop professional, hot mess incarnate. Um, I say I'm a jack of all trades, master of like three of them. Um, I've been a professional Twitch streamer for the past two and a half years. Started because of the panorama that we're in. Um, and it's become something I just do now. Uh, I never thought I'd be on this side of, you know, production. And I am. Uh, just cool, but work. Uh, but yeah, uh, my pronouns are he and they. Interchangeable. Call me either. Just not something I'm not. That's me. Hello, I'm Dana Morgan. Um, I am the executive producer for the Moana Nui podcast, um, the line producer and graphic design for the BOP with uh, the Yellow Power Ranger, Karen Ashley. And um, I got into this. I do um, virtual and in-person events for my full-time job in corporate world. And uh, my co-host for the Moana Nui podcast was like, hey, why don't you guess? And I guess twice to guest host. And then she was like, yeah, you might as well stay. <laughs> <laughs> and then once she got on it, she was like, yeah, you're going to be the executive producer because how you organize stuff, you, yeah, just, just go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been doing it since. So, um, and that, uh, similar to Omega, it started, um, right at the very beginning of the pandemic. And I've been doing, um, that ever since. Uh, my name is Kyle Sullivan. I'm a uh, filmmaker director. I uh, work in the film business generally, but uh, I'm one half of a YouTube channel called Trash Expertise, and I'm another one half of a podcast called Wiki Surfer. And uh, yeah, play at various levels of content creation. And uh, I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am Rita Delatori. I am half of a production uh, team with my husband, Jason. Uh, we run transmissions from Atlantis Entertainment. We have done feature films, uh, live action feature films, uh, fiction uh, podcasts, uh, uh, various talkie podcasts. And we are also in the process of uh, doing animation. We've done comic books. We've done novels. We've done, okay, everything. <laughs> Thank you for saving your stuff for me. No, just <laughs> <laughs> and how did we get into this? Um, well, uh, we actually uh, went to a convention just like this one uh, called TimeGate. Uh, some of you may remember that from, from the Atlanta uh, area. It was a Doctor Who Stargate convention. Um, and uh, Which we, is sadly no longer here. Yeah, which is sadly no longer here. Um, which uh, where we attended a panel about podcasting and how to get into podcasting. And a week later, we were podcasting and <laughs> running out there, and yeah, and and uh, we didn't have a lot of money for you know sound designers or any of that other stuff, so we had to learn a lot, and we did learn a lot along the way. And we're still learning. And we're still learning. <laughs> yeah, I uh, recently found out that Rita and JC live uh, very very near to me in Florida, so yes. um, it's a good thing that we met up here. Yep. Um, so I'm Anthony Vito. I am a freelance podcast producer. I've done over 670 episodes on over 29 shows, uh, mostly in the corporate and enterprise world. And I am the in-house producer for Storyboard, which is an internal podcasting app. Um, I'm also in live theater, uh, similar with I work as a production specialist for USF College of the Arts in Tampa. So I have a little bit in common with everybody that's on this panel, which is really interesting. <laughs> um, so I, we kind of went over um, best kept or uh, how you got here and where you started. Um, but let's go ahead and say um, from a production end, um, how, did you start as a hobby or profession? What made you start into doing things, uh, either working in podcasting or working in digital media? And what was the roadmap to where you got to where you are today? I'll start it. I mean, uh, we start, it's, it was definitely a hobby for us, um, but 
I, I would say that it was more of a desire to get our stories out, you know, because we were, we've always been very creative. Um, we always had our own stories that we always uh, wrote together and uh, it, it was an outlet for us, you know, and we wanted to find the easiest outlet that we could do uh, to be able to, uh, to get the, the messages out. Of course, when we pick fiction podcasts, it, it's not as easy as it seems at the beginning. Uh, and there's a lot that kind of goes into it after that. And, and we had to learn a lot along the way to, to be able to, uh, you know, get the sound levels right, get the sound effects right, get the music right, and have everything kind of uh, gelled together to be able to work. Um, then we had the crazy idea of actually, you know, uh, creating a movie. And that it was a whole other story. Um, it's no longer streaming, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, we had it on Amazon Prime for a while. But uh, yeah, it, it, in many ways, I think it's still a hobby because we create without the ability to be able to create, we're miserable. We have to be creating, mm -hmm. whether it's when I'm making my original artwork or we're creating all of our digital content. Uh, it's, it's just that act of creating that is most important to us. If it wasn't for that, it's like. I don't know. There, it, it, we'd be empty. Be I guess. A very boring life. <laughs> it, it it would be a very boring ordinary life. So uh, you know, we are kind of making that transition to have it to be more of a profession because we do want to network. We want to get our name out there more, and and those are things that we're definitely working towards. But at the end of the day, I still think that it would probably still be a hobby, because it's it's it, it's just doing something that we love so much. And it just um, helps us, like Jason says, to get our stories out. You know, we're, we're creating original content and we want to be able to share it out. And if people dig it, great. <laughs> and if it, you don't dig it, that's okay, too. We like it. Yeah. We like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I always had picked up the camera, so the instincts mm -hmm. was always kind of there. Uh, since I was a teenager, making really, really dumb movies on VHS. Um, but I was going to school to be a research scientist and like right at the end of that whole thing and I was getting degrees, I was like, I'm just gonna like telling stories more. So I jumped <laughs> in and it was about 10 years ago. And, uh, started a podcast, I was saying earlier, just because I really wanted to play around with sound design and uh, learned a lot goofing off in that respect. So really for me, like it's important to have an audience, but like if, if there's a question I have about the process or about the world, I'm going to try and answer it through the creative medium. And yes. if someone else gets to watch it, that's great. I'm, it's really self-driven to a point, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, well, for myself, as far as more on the digital media side, before I got into the producer side, uh, I am a photographer. I do cosplay event corporate and I'm a con staff photographer for MomoCon, Anime Week in Atlanta, several cons. So that was kind of like, uh, it started off as a hobby and it kind of branched from there. And then, um, as I mentioned before, I, I bring that creativity that I have, like um, my fellow panelists, it's like creativity is part of my nature. So I'm allowed to tap into that with my job in planning events and things like that. So that um, my co my co-host for the Moana Nui podcast, she actually attended one of my events for work and she, that's what made her say, Hey, you want to be a, you want to come on the show? Uh, I'm trying to do the, I'm planning on doing this show and everything. And I was like, Oh, okay, let's see how it is. And, and I got involved with it. And then, um, you know, our, and my focus along with hers is really giving an outlet for those that tend to not have as much of an outlet, uh, especially focused within the indigenous cultures and um, and creatives of those cultures, uh, but also uh, um, women and those of the LGBTQIA plus community. Uh, we wanted to have more of that outlet for that, that they can be their authentic selves while um, having a platform. And then the BOP is one of those, you know, talking about hot topics. Um, everything from Marvel to um, the the Will Smith slap. Uh, it, they talk about everything on there. And I'm sitting there like, oh, OK. 
okay should i go off should okay zoom zoom in zoom in right here okay um but it's 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 fun on that because it allows me to be creative it it doesn't seem redundant and even though it's a side thing i i can put passion into it because it is something i enjoy and allows me to be creative so i come from the performing side uh, of a production. Uh, I grew up in church, I'm not Christian now, whole thing, don't need to get into religion. But, uh, <laughs> but I grew up as a soprano in, in church. I was a soprano all the way through freshman year of high school and then puberty. Um, but I grew up as a performer and then I grew up, you know, from singing to acting to doing, you know, all these things. And then when I got into tabletop, especially, you know, doing tabletop and as, as an actual play, um, I was like, yeah, I'm still just performing. And then I realized very quickly, oh, there's so much more to actually kind of produce an actual play show. So I only became a producer because I had to, or a show wouldn't happen. <laughs> uh, I learned very quickly how to, you know, utilize sound and, and, and atmosphere and, and camera work and lighting and all these things, even in a virtual space, because again, pandemic, uh, a lot of us were doing Zoom work. Uh, so learning how to navigate those things. Um, I... I enjoy it now, but I never knew just how much it was important. And I, I say that even coming from a theatrical space, because th there's a level when you're in high school, college or whatever, and it was like, you know, you think West Side Story, the Jets versus Sharks, but instead it was the actors versus the tech crew. <laughs> <laughs> and you never really appreciated the other side. And I could learn very quickly to appreciate the other side. So uh, as, as long as I knew all of that work as well as my own, I knew I could produce something good. So I kind of utilize all of that information and experience to what I do now um, as a content creator, because I am my own producer. Uh, I am my own marketer. I am my own person. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I, I, I joked earlier that uh, I remember looking at the app and I was like, oh, cool, a podcasting um, a panel. I'm not a podcaster, um, but I still have a lot of experience. And I, I, all of you probably do as well. It's like you might not do this thing, but there's so much when it comes to producing that can apply to so many different areas. Uh, so I think that's important. Yes. That, that, that's I would say on the pod, when you're doing live streaming, you're, you got to get it hundred percent right. When it comes to a podcast, you have yes. producers who, mm -hmm. or yourself who's able to go ahead and say, Hey, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to take that out. So mm -hmm. in streaming and you got to know the, the whole production side of it too. Yes. Oh, we to, we to joke right. that you're not a streamer until you've had a tech issue. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Goodness. It's, it's, it's just a thing. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, learning how to navigate that really quickly. Yeah, I, you know. I was just telling him that I, I wouldn't want to do streaming because I, you know, to me, just doing that kind of improv stuff is just crazy. It's a <laughs> lot. It's a lot. I got I to interact with the chat, too. Uh, how yes. many people have watched a live stream and the streamer goes, oh, have an internet problem? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's not something you can control, but it's yeah, definitely it's something that matters. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, as you mentioned, like doing th uh, theater, uh, theater producers, someone very different. If anyone's seen the musical producers, that's different than what podcast producers do or what video producers do. Yeah. Um, so there are multiple different types of producers in the industry, executive producers, creative producers, associates. What, what is um, uh, in your, in your specific industries, what is a producer to you do? What do you expect? And if you, are you a kind of solo worker where you do the creative and the producing yourself, or do you kind of work with a team? That's kind of what I want to, Ask you. That is a good question because yeah, you you, you kind of nailed it. Yeah, there's there are different types of producing. Uh, I mean, in digital media, we, we think about the producer being the ones who kind of run the show behind the scenes in a way, not necessarily the manager or not necessarily the designer, but they're the ones kind of hands on, kind of really in the know, and they know all the aspects just in case something goes wrong. Whereas in theater. Yeah, they're kind of mostly like the marketers. They're the ones making sure that all of the the, the strings that you as an actor or you as a technician, they, they're there, but you don't need to see them. The producer does. They make sure all of that's in, in, in line. Uh, but it's kind of the same way. You know, those strings are just now a web in, in the computer or all of your uh, equipment all needed to make yes. sure it, it plays together so everything turns on. Uh, I think that's what a producer does. The producer makes sure things work well and stay on. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'd, rather, I'd rather think that producing like is a singular job description. So like, if you're a baseball player in a tee game and you're going to show up to bat, the producer is going to produce everything else around that situation, the tee, the ball, the yeah. bat, the uniform. 
like it doesn't matter if it's a podcast or a theater play like mm-hmm. they're they're pro- providing the materials and the context so that the people you hire can do the job yes yes, right? yes. and the funny thing is about it if you're like a film producer or a podcast producer or something like that it may seem like there is a set limit or a set list of things you're constantly worried about that only that position worries about but honestly like production to production it's different every time yes. yeah so like being a producer is really a flexible kind of job absolutely mm-hmm. yeah i agree with that 100 percent. you know having done both audio film and now animation which is a whole other ball of wax but <laughs> um yeah i i have to agree 100 percent because i mean there's a lot that kind of uh goes along this, mm-hmm. with the same same processes same, a lot of the same uh, work that we have to do there are different tasks that have to get done yeah but the, the overall processes are very very similar mm-hmm. yeah i need a volkswagen beetle painted like bowser from the super mario series <laughs> tomorrow yeah. how, do I, how do i produce that yeah yeah, yeah. and then it also kind of you know for myself the contrast of the different shows it's like i am the one person that is doing audio um, getting the uh, intro, the outro, um, doing the logistics, coordinating with any guests, making sure it's on the calendar, making sure it's posted on social media to people know about upcoming episodes. But then I have on the Bob, I'm the line producer, just make sure, all right, everybody's mic's working, okay, your audio's working. Um, but I'm not doing as much of the stuff that I'm doing with Moana Nui because, you know, we have an executive producer there and then I'm the line producer. So I don't have as much to have to juggle. I still have to juggle something, but it's not going to, uh, you know, I maybe have three balls in the air with this one. And then Moana Nui, I got like 20 and I'm hoping one of them will fall. <laughs> and and that's, a, that's an important distinction because, uh, you know, you had asked if, you know, solo project versus a huge team. I would love to have a huge team. Yes. But I have um, a distinct issue. We are the team. Exactly. <laughs> I have a distinct yes. issue, and that is called money. Yes. <laughs> um, and trust issues. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well. Uh, yes. Now, now she's pointing me out here. Okay. Um, yes. I have a tr- I have trouble letting go. I will admit that. Yes. I like to sometimes say that, I mean, especially I keep, I'm, I'm just going to always go back to theater, y'all. I'll just, just deal with it now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, I like to think like, you know, the actors are the ones on the stage, the technicians, you know, set the stage. The producers is the metaphysical stage itself. Without the producers helping shape this thing, mm-hmm. this thing doesn't happen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so think about that in a digital space as well. You know, the producers really make sure that the overall picture is there. There are different aspects, you know, the performers, the technicians, all that stuff. But the producer sees that vision come to life as a whole. Mm-hmm. And they also, also almost represent the audience as well, mm-hmm. you know, making sure it gets out to the audience, make sure yeah. the audience understands it. All these things are important to producing. There's different aspects, like the line producer, the yeah. technical producer, all these things. Mm-hmm. But they all serve the same purpose, which is yeah. to set that stage, mm-hmm. to be that stage almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, that. When you have a team, I feel like you're able to go ahead and say, as a producer, this is your job. This is your your job. This is your job, especially in a the theatrical setting when there's a lot of different moving parts yeah, in a live yeah, theater. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and like uh, for as a uh, podcasting or in digital media, video, what have you, sometimes the term hey, I need a producer. They're just saying, I need someone to edit this. I need someone. I just want to talk on the microphone. I need someone to get from here to the 100,000 subscriber show to to make that part happen. So um, when we talk about different industries, uh, if you are working on a creating creative end and you bring in a producer and it's like, okay, hey, look, this is what I'm trying to do. Is it one of those things where we're going to collaborate together or is it like, this is what I want to do. You just make it happen. What's the um, what's kind of been your experience with your with your show specifically about how that's worked with my creative vision versus you're helping me or we're working together as a team? I, I chuckle because for us, because we are the team, we're like, OK, so this is what we have to do. What do we have to do to get this done? Uh, like he said, sometimes it's a matter of money. Mm-hmm. We don't have it. <laughs> so we can't necessarily outsource some of this stuff. So what we end up doing is budgeting for time. Yes. Time mm-hmm. to learn this new software, yeah. learn this new skill. Yeah. 
uh, take the necessary tutorials in order to become a, a, a subject matter expert on this, mm -hmm. whether it's using uh, all the Adobe products, Premiere, mm -hmm. uh, After Effects, Adobe Audition to FL Studio to uh, um, Final Draft. Mm -hmm. It's learning all of these skills so that we can do as much in-house as we yeah. possibly can. Mm -hmm. The more we can do in-house, the more money we know we're going to save. But we also know that that means it, the longer it's going to take us to produce things. But it's also a skill we can reproduce over and over yes. and over mm -hmm. again yes. and get better at yeah, it. Because once we put that time in to learn this skill, that is a skill that we've learned it for this project. Now we can go into this next project and we already have the skill. Yeah. I think at a low enough budget level, you're wearing a lot of hats. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you end up, <laughs> you end up producing just by, you know, by necessity. Uh, but at the higher level of money, like someone who chooses to be a producer, how do they, how they choose projects is usually based on interest. Mm -hmm. If they can help it, I mean, unless they're starving about, you know, yeah. and they got to, I'll produce it fine. <laughs> um, but you know, it depends on how well you fit together with your creative partners. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it, sometimes they're not doing the same kind of producing they did in the last project. If the person they're working with is mm -hmm. covering part of the job with them or something, it's, yeah. it's a personality connection. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, it's like, you know, um, it's a form of collaboration because when you're getting pulled in to be a producer of any type on a project that is not your own. It, for me, I have to understand what is your vision? What are you trying to make it happen? What reach do you want? What all are you wanting the audience to see? Because if I, you just tell me to produce, I'm going to be like, mm, there's such a range. What you want me to do? <laughs> and But then if I sit there and understand, okay, this is the look you're trying to go for. This is how you want it to go. You want, you know, I'll say from the bop, it's like, hey, when we switch subjects you you know we zoom in on one of the person speaking have it for at least you know 20 to 25 seconds before we uh, go to seeing everybody that is on um on the show and then when the next person talks on the topic we zoom in on that person uh so that is something that i found out you know as working with the executive producer that's what the look they wanted so i knew that's how i need to operate so that collaboration is needed. That uh, communication is essential, especially if you're doing digitally and the person you work with is not next door. Uh, you got to have that communication and that understanding and also that uh, level of respect and, and a, a little bit of trust, but also um, letting go of the reins a little. Because I know there's a lot of people that cannot, is, that control, they can't let go. But if you're bringing a producer in, you got to let go for them to do their job. Uh, yeah, it is interesting because it, it all depends on what you are needing in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, using a streaming example, I knew I wanted to play D&D, &D, but I knew I wanted to focus on the performance of it all. I knew that if I tried to produce and perform, something would be lackluster on one side or the other. So I said, hey, I need somebody who can run this show for me. It'll be on my channel, but you'll get the stream key. You'll get everything I need, blah, blah, blah. You'll get the overlays, the layouts, blah, blah, blah. If you, if you can do that, my cast and I can focus on the performance of it. All. Obviously, we're going to collaborate and always stay in communication because whether you're doing it, you know, for necessity, uh, you're, you're collaborating with this person or whatever case may be, that communication is going to matter no matter what. So, you know, that's totally fine. Or sometimes I, I have a vision of something I want to do, but I'm not necessarily trying to be the one to do it. I just have the vision. I will produce the show, have it go to somewhere else. We can collaborate on what you want, what you want to get out of this, uh, whether that's, you know, something because you love it, you want to make some money from it, whatever the case may be. Like, we can collaborate, and, and, and I will give, obviously, a lot more power to them. Uh, power is a weird word. A lot more <laughs> say, I guess, um, because I want them to have as much of a good experience as, as, as I do. But again, that collaboration is still going to be important and that communication is going to be important. Um, but you said something that made me go, oh, I need to write that down. Uh, you know, you talk about the reach that you want. Sometimes it's about the reach that you have. Mm 
mm-hmm. and don't have. Exactly. <laughs> sometimes you want to do something and you just know for a fact that you just don't have that visibility. Mm-hmm. So sometimes getting a producer is important because yes. they have a platform that they, you can use um, to boost what you need. But exactly. again, communication is always going to be important. So I think, yeah, there's a level of... Um, you know, solo versus team, if I'm working in a team, if I'm working with someone, great. It just depends on what I need for that moment. Yes. And if I believe I can do it by myself, like Madea said, then I'm going to do it all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes that's just not what it is. So kind of segueing from that, doing it all by yourself, as you know, the term solopreneur is out there, is just kind of, <laughs> I decided I want to do the show. I'm going to start here before I don't have any money to pay somebody, but maybe I do based on that. Mm-hmm. So uh, when, when you're when you're deciding to start and say, okay, I'm a creator and I'm going to be my own producer, where do you start from there as someone who's new and then versus what is it best to say, look, I don't know these things, but I have something I want to say. What do you think the resources are? This is what you should focus on when finding a producer or finding someone to assist you in the technical side. I'm just going to jump in really quickly because I don't have a lot to say on this. And I know they probably have a lot more to say. Uh, just, being, just being honest with yourself, which is what I was going to say. Be honest with yourself. What do you think you need? Yes. What do you think you can do? And what are you sure? What are you 100% sure you just can't do? Start there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I said, oh, I don't know how to run a stream. I learned how to run a stream. I learned how OBS works. I learned how the computers work. I learned how all these things work so I can be a better producer. So then I could do it later. But I knew I just didn't have that education or that experience. So I reached out. Um, Start from the things that you just know you don't know. And it's okay to not know something. We are not omnipotent. We don't know everything. And if we did... Well, I would say this world would be a better place, but it probably wouldn't be. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, start, in my opinion, you start with the things you truly just don't know because it's okay to learn. Mm -hmm. We learn every day. Yes. And and the one thing I would add to that, and, you know, great, perfect. That that took the words right out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, But the one thing I would add is just be patient with yourself. Yes. Because, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit to get the hang of a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, After Effects can be a very intimidating program when you're first starting out. And and it takes a little while to learn, you know, a lot of the tricks of the trade. Same thing with anything, anything that you're using. So just give yourself some patience. I mean, like, for example, it's like, Adobe Audition, I love it. I know, I know all the ins and outs of it. Uh, uh, Premiere Pro, fantastic. I love that too. <laughs> Throw me into Adobe Photoshop and I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm like, hand that over to him and let him do that. Uh, it's like some things I have patience for, some things I don't have patience for. Photoshop mm-hmm. is definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it really is about trying to let go. And for us, I know uh, that has been probably one of the most challenging things for us yeah. um, because of the fact that we've had that those bad experiences where mm-hmm. we decided, okay, we're going to let this go. And then what we got back was, was garbage. It was worse than what we could have done if we would have just given the time to it. Exactly. And, it's, and, it's and, like, and, and so that just kind of re- <laughs> you know, starts to reinforce the, you know, let's just keep doing this in-house. Yeah. It, it, and it and it does get hard to let go. Yeah. yeah, but but at some point you've got to because yeah. you can't do everything. I mean, as you know, we we uh, we have so many projects that we want to work on, but because we try to take all of those on at the same time, who has time for that? Especially if you still have a nine to five like we do. You know, yes. it, uh-huh. it's almost impossible to do it. So mm-hmm. at some point you got you got to do it. Yeah, that's a that's a funny thing about this kind of work. Uh, is that if you hire somebody to do X for you, it might not be a good fit. It's not like hiring someone to change your tire. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot more wiggle room for yeah. that kind of thing to happen. Yeah. I've been burned a bunch. So yeah. I'd rather just do this myself. Yeah, yeah, you'll have some people that are flexible. You'll have some people that are, uh, you know, will just do the things they feel they should be mm-hmm. instead of, you and, know, listening. Uh, and, and then there's people that just don't, get what you're trying to do you yeah. know and even though you've spent you know a lot of time trying to explain it to it this is the the feel of the show this is our story bible this is yeah. how it all kind of works and then they just do their own thing and you get back and you're like what the hell is this you yeah. Know? yeah yeah so yeah it's it, it can be uh tough to let go and you know piggyback i definitely agree about like knowing what you don't know what you have the bandwidth to learn and what things as 
my fellow panelists, uh, panelists said is what things when you look at it, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. But my one of the biggest things is, you know, look at also your budget, too. Oh, I yes. also see a lot of people, they go hard fast and they're like, yes, yeah, so I bought this, you know, thousand dollar mic. I had to get this. And I'm like. And but then they're expected because they invested so much money it's going to be a very big return instantly. <laughs> and it's also you need a producer to keep that uh, reality check for you, too, because it's kind of like one person that reached out to me and I'm like, <laughs> they were like, oh, yes, um, I'm going to set the goal that within two weeks I'm going to have over 2000 followers. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I love the enthusiasm, but you know, have you thought of your concept of your show? Is it going to appeal to two thousand people that want to follow you like that? How are they going to find you and all this stuff? But it's one of those. Some people have the concept: more, the better the equipment, the more expensive it is, yeah. the better return, and that's yeah. not it. It's it, not it is definitely the quality. Mm -hmm the experience. what experience and everything and sometimes it may be you providing it or also use your network of people that you may know that produce and say hey i'm looking for producer who do you recommend mm -hmm. because a lot of them have been through the trenches like my fellow panelists and they could say who don't know that one you just mentioned mm -mm -mm. <laughs> they on the blacklist for everybody at dragon con <laughs> um so that is the kind of stuff you it can help you prevent that heartburn by talking to other shows that you know and they can tell you these are my experiences these are my ins and outs and these are the producers i've worked with that i had a positive experience and they actually take the time to really understand what you're trying to do yeah I, and, and, uh, go ahead I, I completely agree with that and uh you know part of our process i mean we've been doing this since like 2012. Mm -hmm. we everything was always a process and it, it was a slow growth. Yes. We started small. Then we, you know, got a little bit bigger, got a little bit mm -hmm. better equipment. Got a little we bit We did crazy. not buy a $30,000 <laughs> mic and we still have it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think the most expensive mic we bought was like a thousand bucks, right? Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it was a Sennheiser that we still use. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's like every little, you know, few years will upgrade here yes. and there right mm -hmm. little by um, little uh, although i will say that you know when i was trying to learn how to uh, compose music um i made that huge mistake where mm -hmm. you know i bought every high-end music library you could find yeah. you know i spent thousands of dollars where if i would have just spent that money on a quality composer i would have probably gotten a lot more <laughs> um and i'm like all right i got you know this amazing thing but i don't know how to write a chord <laughs> how do you do that <laughs> I, I will say this the most expensive thing that we have bought i would say in the last couple of years in fact it was right before the pandemic was a whisper room yeah mm -hmm. and that thing has been such a lifesaver in regards to audio quality yeah uh, especially because we mostly record out of our home so the the audio there's so many noises yes. we've got uh, family members in the other side of the house. We've got trucks rolling around outside, AC you know, our, our window. On. The AC is <laughs> making noise. <laughs> we invested in a whisper room. The whisper room is, um, it, it, it's essentially it's a, big a, sound booth. It, it's a big sound booth. We love it. It's mm. absolutely amazing. Our audio is always crystal clear, which is fantastic. But but that's like the biggest investment we've made in like 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you, in, in experience. Push, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Push you to that corner. Uh, yes. You know, if you're at a low level and you're just starting out, yes. And you have to wear a lot of hats, and producers be one of the hats, and you have to spend some money somewhere on yeah. a thing that you don't know how to do. Buy experience. Don't buy tools. Yes. Exactly. Like, yes. Hundred like, times out of a hundred, I would not hire a film student with a thirty thousand dollar camera. I'd hire Spielberg with a cell phone because mm. he already knows how to do. The, you don't. The tools don't matter as much. Right. As yes. They do, yeah. Especially at the that, lowest levels. That's funny because we actually used to own black magic cameras. Black magic cameras. Yeah. We don't anymore because we're using our 13 <laughs> pros. <laughs> there you go. There yeah, you go. And, yeah, and that's and yeah, yeah. Don't it's don't awesome. think when you're starting out you need all the biggest it's, and baddest mm -hmm. and the most you know sparkly. It's I as a as a streamer, 
I still use the same Logitech C922X webcam that I started with. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. But I know how to make it look <laughs> great. <laughs> exactly. Because I have the experience in producing yep. to make it look better. Yep. Exactly. It's not about what it is. It's about how you use it and what you can do to elevate what you already have. Mm -hmm. Let's double back. When did um, So when did everybody start uh, creating or producing your, your work that you work on versus when did you start feeling comfortable with it? <laughs> how long did it take? Uh, um, well, five we minutes ago? Maybe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we started in 2012. Uh, just doing a, a, a talky podcast, yeah. uh, we always felt like we were fumbling through that and we were just kind of doing it as a hobby and doing it for fun. Mm -hmm. I think when we finally felt like we kind of crossed over into the next level was when we started doing fiction podcasting. Mm -hmm. That's when we really bumped it up a notch and we were uh, not only going out and, you know, doing casting calls and getting quality voice actors like Amanda there, <laughs> uh, but, you know, we were also putting in the effort for good sound effects, mm -hmm. music. Uh, um, has anybody ever heard of Midnight Syndicate? Mm -hmm. yeah. They actually uh, do, well, not, not, didn't produce for us, but they allowed us to pretty much use their entire music library for our for Vampires our of Whitechapel mm -hmm. uh, yeah. podcast. And it just adds so much to it. it, it but it, it's not just here's a piece of music with, with a piece of dialogue. It's knowing when to add certain uh, things in, it, during certain times in order to punch up that story to the yes. next level. Mm -hmm. So that's when for us, we've we gone from here. We're talking to, about geeky stuff to now we're actually producing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I said for my. Myself, because I was already kind of doing my own project management, producing these things for work. I had one aspect because you know it was work. But then when I had to start, of course, we with the whole streaming and everything in 2020, and then at the same time I was getting into voice acting. Um, it was one of those that. You know, I had people constantly tell me, oh, you can do that. We see what you can do already. You can do that. I'm like, this is a different animal. This is live. People are seeing me. They're seeing, you know, it's not me behind the scenes and everybody's just enjoying it. They're, I, I'm in front of the camera. They're seeing my facial expressions if it just because I have a very expressive face. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's something that catches me off guard, I cannot control it. it I am that meme that says my face tells on me. So, um, and it was one of those that was just like, okay. But then I think all the stuff that I got used to doing at work, it allowed me to set our, um, the, our way of work for me and my co-host. And she's located in the DMV. So we're nowhere in the same state, but we make the show work. And same with the bop, you know, Karen, uh, you know, is going to be California or Texas, depending on what's going on in our filming. Uh, Christy's in Texas. I'm in Georgia. And you have all these different places, but it allowed me saying, you know, I'm like, here's my one note. I keep scheduled of every episode that's going on, which topics we have discussed that we're going to have for whatever show, who's coming on, all of that. And then that way, anybody from the show can go to it, can see what's being done, what's the links to um, the Facebook that has been created already that we're streaming to, all of that. So that way they can have um, it is just that open book to everybody to kind of know what's going on. That way no one feels like, I don't know what's going on at all. Um, and I, that made me feel like, yeah, this is it. And, you know, I was feeling like that with Moana Nui, but then now I'm like, then I got asked with, with Karen to work with her with the Bob. And I was like, <laughs> and she was like, will you be interested? Yes. <laughs> This is something I can get paid for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you're a project manager? I at, for my job, I, I like to tell people I am my official title is executive assistant event coordinator. Executive assistant, anyone who knows one, we do everything. So yeah, because <laughs> I'm a project manager <laughs> yes. myself. So it, it it really does help. 
when you you can bring those skills yes. into your hobby skills because it mm -hmm. really helps to keep you organized. Exactly. I'm going to go on a weird tangent. It's not going to be a long tangent, <laughs> but a weird tangent because I like to tie weird, weird things together. I'm a makeup artist. Uh, I've been doing makeup for the past couple, mm, like five, six years at the very least. Um, and something I like to joke about is, you know, everybody's trying to sell you to have this next spec thing, or you need this for this specific place. You need this for that. And it's like, I've always been a person saying that makeup is universal. Uh, I can use eyeshadow for my brows. I can use eyeshadow to contour if I really need to, right? You can do all that. You can utilize the things that you didn't expect to be able to use for certain, for different aspects, for different things that you need. Tying that in, uh, I started doing production work in 2020 because that's when I started streaming. Uh, and I didn't feel like like I really knew it until 2022, mm -hmm. which is this year. Uh, but I've been in this industry since I was a child. I've seen everything. I just didn't know I understood it until yeah. now. Uh, my, my joke as I'm a, a d and person is that my highest stat other than performance is perception. I see it here, everything. I also understand everything on like a molecular level. So like thinking like thinking back at all the concerts I've been to, I've been in, looking at how all of the tech uh, crew is doing what they're doing, setting the lights, yeah. setting the, uh, the sound um, uh, levels, et cetera. Yes. You know, going up into theater, noting how all of these pieces are starting to come together. It's like, oh, I knew all of this stuff. I just didn't know how to apply it. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I say all that to like, you probably know a lot more than you think. Yes. You just yes. haven't applied it. Once you start to apply it, then you'll understand it. That's my, that, that's my good TED talk. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you're, it's, you're spot on because a lot of people said, if I don't have that title, that, didn't mean, that doesn't mean I have that experience. Like yeah. most people think, yeah, oh, well, I'm just this. But if, you're doing all these other things in your role. You you have that project manager experience. You have that coordinator experience. All that you just didn't have the title to match it. Yeah, producing isn't a kind of an amorphous position as it is. So like you're already like knee deep in it, doing it before you realize. Oh, that's. Uh, I guess I could call myself. That. <laughs> yeah. um, well, th that's why I call myself the CFO because I'm the money lady. <laughs> <laughs> That my first podcast I ever got into, it was literally someone saying, hey, we need a podcast producer. And I said, well, I know audio. Google what a podcast producer does. Oh, that's a lot of words. <laughs> Sometimes you just jump in and, and they go, okay, how are we going to do this? And I went, all right, we're going to fake it till we make it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, but Sometimes you, you, you got to. Yeah. Um, and then imposter syndrome yes. is really high in this kind of world. Yes, and uh, uh, Jason will be the first to, uh, to tell you that I have this go big or go home mentality. We mm. both do. And it we, gets we us in trouble do. all the yeah. time. It does. So, sometimes it works out well. Sometimes we might take on something that we can't handle, but we're always going to at least try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you have a community of you know people listening to your content as well, they'll let you know if, hey, that really worked. Or, yes. hey, oh, yes. They <laughs> will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, and live streaming right right away too. Yes. Now, it doesn't I'm, mean I'm change just... your work because they said they didn't like it. Guess yep. what? They can go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, exactly. That, that's what that's why we said, you know, if somebody else likes our stuff, great. You know, if they don't, as long as we like it, we're good. Right? Exactly. Because there's yeah. something for someone. Yeah. That part. So um, I know a lot of us have said we have full time jobs as well, in addition to creating or producing. So how do you keep yourself if you're doing it all? You're doing the creation. I'm gonna I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna do all my sound design. I'm gonna produce it. And then I'm also going to take the time to edit it and put it out. In addition to having to wake up at 7.30 tomorrow to go to work, <laughs> how do you do it and keep the creative juices flowing? Like, How, how are you able no, to not overdo that's yourself? Not that's a whole different panel, I do know. But <laughs> this end from yeah, For those of that were just listening, she just pointed at me, no, that's not true. She helps me so much. And without her, I couldn't do what we're doing. Um, it's it's a tough. You know, It really is tough to try to find, find the time to do it because, you know, uh, we work from home now, you know, since, since COVID, we, uh, we actually have our own office and we work from our office now. Um, and, uh, after, you know, you've been in the office all day, the last thing you want to do back to back meetings, you know, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is stay there and do your creative stuff because you're tired or you don't want to be in there. Anymore. You want to go and watch TV and <laughs> watch the new game of Thrones or To 
to go through your workflow, you know, get the writing done, get, get the, uh, the casting done, get everything that you need to, uh, in order to, to be able to build your show. Why do we create? A lot of you are going to say, because I have to, it's in my lifeblood. While that might be true, that's also spiritually false. You create because you want to. Exactly. You create because it brings you joy. Oh, yes. you, you create mm -hmm. because it brings you happiness. Don't burn yourself out on the things that bring you joy. Oh, yes. The pandemic has taught us many things. But for me, it's taught me that self-care is so important. Taking care of my mental is so important, as well as my spiritual and emotional. If I don't take care of myself, the things I create will reflect that. If I don't take care of myself, I won't do what I need to do to delegate my time and actually be able to produce the content that I want to. If I don't take care of myself, my audience will be able to tell that I'm yeah. not taking yeah. care of myself. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. 100% yes. <laughs> all that. And, yes. if, if, and, thank you. Mm -hmm. And if you need to take a break, Take a, a break. break. Yes. You know, do what you got to do to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I give myself, we're sorry. I give myself really quickly, um, uh, I, whether it's D&D &D or whatever, I say I have an open door policy and yes. that policy extends to myself as well. Exactly. If mm -hmm. I feel like I need to get up and use the restroom, guess what I'm going to go do? Yes. <laughs> if I feel like I need a Red Bull or whatever, I'm going to go get that. I'm going to make sure that I'm taking care of me and keeping my mental happy or even keeping my mental content. Sometimes it's not about happiness. Yes. But so, as long as you can stay above that water, as long as I can stay above that water, I'm good. So just take care of yourself and take breaks. Take time mm -hmm. for you. And it, uh, in the previous another panel that I was on, they asked about work-life balance. That is constantly like a the hot word that is constantly used. And I brought up that work-life balance is a false term. Um, you have to look at flexible scheduling for yourself. You have to make sure you're giving yourself the time you need and schedule yourself accordingly. And then you also, um, my biggest thing is know your hard nose because a lot of people give inches because this friend came and they need a little help. And even though this was supposed to be my time with my family or my time for me oh i'm gonna go and give them a couple hours and then that line keeps getting pushed back and pushed back then all of a sudden you're wondering i i haven't had a vacation or an off day in 12 years and you know you're getting people can tell you're tired um you know but at the same time you know you can be efficient like they said make your workflow figure out your scheduling uh get all that figured out that this is my planning day this is my dedicated planning day. This is my day that I'm working on this. Get that figured out that can balance, uh, that can work well and not balance, but work well with your work schedule, your home life, and everything else you're going through. Because you will have people, I hear it all the time, they're like, Dana, are you a vampire? Because when do you sleep? Because you, you got your full-time job. You're doing voice acting because I'm recording for a video game right now. Um, I'm doing the two podcasts. I just been uh, made an offer to executive produce another show um, that I'm getting ready to pick up in 2023. And then, you know, I do event planning and then still do my photography for cons, panels like this and everything else. So that I'm like... Trust me, I do sleep, but I schedule myself accordingly that I still have time for me. Yeah. yeah. Producing, one of the things a producer does is scheduling. So you yes. the, the more creative stuff you're doing, the more amorphous possibility scheduling ones you have. You just, just got to be very diligent about scheduling your time. Yes. I fail at that constantly. Um, I am a massive advocate for self mental health care, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty much, I have a blog and that's pretty much all it's about. It's about finding that happiness in your life, focusing on that every single day. Yes. Because you have to think about it like weight loss, right? You lose 20 pounds. You don't just stop, you know, eating well or stop exercising because you lost those 20 pounds. It's the same thing with your mental health. Yes. If you have to focus on that every single day or else you're going to, you know, go down this rabbit hole. And then the things that 
were bringing you joy and were bringing you happiness all of a sudden are making you miserable or they feel like a chore. And if those things are not making you happy anymore, it might not be those things. You have to kind of reevaluate what else is going on in your life that these mm -hmm. things are making it feel, yes. uh, making you feel unhappy. And th that's kind of the way uh, you have to take it, which is why I 100% agreed with what you just said about mm -hmm. the self-care, because that is a big thing with uh, creating and producing it. Because if what you're doing is not fun, Yes. Then don't do it. Then don't do it. Yeah, yes. It's really easy to burn out. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I'm just going to say really quickly, uh, I'm an honest person to a fault. I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> Why am I a hypocrite? Because it is 6.18. I got up at 9 a.m. The last time I ate was 2 a.m. Um, <laughs> so after this panel, I'm on the next panel. And guess what I'm going to do? Eat, because that's self-care. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't do that yet, and I should have. Taking time for yourself. See? Yeah. Excellent. It's never a bad idea to treat yourself when you, when you can. <laughs> yes. um, I, I, you said producers also do the scheduling. Sometimes you schedule all the creative work and everything like that. And then you forget that. When am I supposed to edit this? Right. We were supposed to release on Friday. I guess I'm editing at 12. <laughs> you didn't schedule yourself correctly. Yeah. Um, and so, also, also think about your Dragon Con scheduling. You, know, yes. you hit everything you put on your schedule, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Right? No? That's the way it is sometimes. <laughs> supposed to wake up what time tomorrow? Okay. Um, so uh, let's open. We have about 11 more minutes to uh, Q&A. So there's a microphone right in the center. Please speak clearly into it so the stream can also hear. But if you have any questions, uh, jump on up. Come on, Rita. Yes, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do, 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 do. So a lot of people who get into podcasting or doing videos on Twitch and stuff like that, they don't have the money to hire a producer. How do you all recommend separating your creative side from your producing side? That's a great question. Um, Some, honestly, sometimes you can't. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you're finding that you're kind of doing the creation and the production all at the same time. When you wear all of the hats, mm -hmm. uh, keeping all of that separate can be challenging. And, and sometimes that's where happy actions occur you exactly know, where you know you had an, a vision of something going in a certain way and then as you're putting it all together and and, and uh trying to put this effect working with that effect and it's just not working right then I'll, you know all of a sudden you try something else and it's like yeah, yeah that's kind of better i like mm -hmm. that yeah i think it's about like, like, a, like a producer provides the material context for like the metaphysical stage like mm -hmm. you said if you're if you're going to try and produce a thing by yourself, then I would think about how much money you're going to put into it, yeah. how to schedule it, and then yeah. yes. start creating the, the details all without losing the major theme that you're going for. So it's a freaking balancing act. You know? yeah. Yeah. There is value in collaboration. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you won't have the money. You just won't. Passion projects exist for a reason. Yes. Because <laughs> they're not about the money. They're not, you might not have any, but sometimes you just want to do it. And sometimes you'll find a producer who also just want to do, do it. it. Yeah. It's not always going to happen, but asking and seeing who is willing to work with you if you don't have the money at that moment is, is still a good thing because you might mm -hmm. find that person who wants to do it because it's a it's a passionable, passionable, it's a pa it's a thing they're passionate about. There we are. <laughs> Webster's dictionary, I got it. Um <laughs> But yeah, like, I guess just have ask a question. It, it might not be a yes, but it could just be a not yet, you know? So, that, that. and I was just going to say a lot of times it has to complement each other, being the mm -hmm. yin to the yang. Yeah. Because a lot of times I will say, like with my co host, she'll be like, yeah, we're going to do, I'm going to do all this, 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 that. And I'm like, hold on, let's, let's bring it back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a lot of times that producer side is going to keep you in check because. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, trying to stomp out your creativity. It's one of those to say, help you realize what's in your bandwidth because you're doing this by yourself and you still got to keep your household going, your job, make sure you feed and take care of the dog. Keep your house. If you have oh, offspring, your house, exactly. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times that creative thing would be like, I would like to write a book. And then on top of that, uh, two weeks after I write that book, I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And then I'm going to do this video. And it's like, okay, when is all this going to happen? But it's one of those that it is hand in hand. Um, don't think that your producing side is keeping you from creative. It's just keeping that reality check 
to make sure you're staying within that schedule of your bandwidth and still taking care of yourself in your home. Excellent point. One of the neat things about this track, and not to pat the DC digital media track, uh, but it's really great to talk to people and see people that are in the industry or work on these things and to just say, bounce off questions about what yeah. that, hey, uh, how, how, do you, how do you do this? How do you support this? Or, hey, I did this thing. What do you think? Or do you have anyone who wants to look at this or wants to be, be a part of this? So it's neat to kind of meet amongst everybody um, that comes to this track to see if there's anything there that could be a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Hi. Come on. Hi. Uh, so you had mentioned that you use a story Bible, which makes sense because mm -hmm. you work primarily with fiction podcasts. But yeah. I was wondering if there were any other tools or templates that the rest of you use that actually help with the production process or the editing process and keeping your, your content consistent. Are you audio? Are you visual? Are you, um, are you podcasting? Primarily it would be audio. Uh, Adobe Edition is a fantastic tool, mm -hmm. and uh, it's subscription-based, yeah. so they're updating it all the time. Yeah, like, for example, we have a monthly subscription, uh, and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it, it is a little much because it's like $50 a month, but you also have access to their entire software library, mm -hmm. everything from Adobe Audition to After Effects, Premiere Pro, um, mm -hmm. uh, Lightroom, Yeah. Uh, Everything that they have, you'll have access to all the time, and it's constantly being updated. So that's definitely one of the really good tools. Yeah, and I, I like using Final Draft. A lot of people, a lot of audio producers don't use Final Draft because it's really geared towards uh, film. Film. Mm -hmm. um, but I I started my screenwriting as a, a for film, and then kind of moved into audio. And it just uh, is a tool that I, I feel like the structure it really works. The actors can really work with it. Um, it, it's got great tools where I can actually uh, sort, uh, you know, lines for my different actors and I could just hand those lines over to them and they have a nice little package of it. So it just makes things a lot simpler. There's uh, free, yeah. there, freeware yeah. open source, mm -hmm. like VLC is a, mm -hmm. a thing you can use to cut audio and depending on what kind of audio you're making, like there's a lot of public domain and uh, U.S. Army stuff floating around. Yes. All yep. Wikimedia, like just stuff everywhere that you can pull from and use audio wise, depending mm -hmm. on yep. Yeah, and I was going to say Audacity is your friend. I Audacity. use Audacity, Audacity. all yes, the time Audacity. because who got Adobe Audition money? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> so. yes. It's free, but it's also open source. Yeah. yeah. And we actually use still use Audacity to pretty much record most of our audio. Yep. Great. Yeah. Right. It's cool. Yeah. Question. Uh, I, I know we're running out of time, but. Um, do you think it's better to, as a visual person, to have a plan or a vision to what you want the final product to be? Or Both. do you think it's better Both. to have like a plan? Vision Both. is the creative side. Mm -hmm. Yes. Plan is your producer. Exactly. Oh, that's, yes. 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 Exactly. Perfect answer. Exactly. So, like, put it on if you have an idea, a theme uh, that you want to put out there, say that, write it down, and then put your producer head on, like, okay, what's possible? How do I, like, exactly. How do I get there? I, exactly. And it's all depends. It's just all how you um, how you start. Mm -hmm. Like, where, where is your where Are you thinking about the overall concept? Or are you thinking about the things that you need to put in place? They both complement each other, yes. but it's not one or the other. It's 1,000% both. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, yes. And I have a really quick antidote on it. You know, when we made our film, uh, Secrets of the Lost World, we set out with big ideas, really big ideas. What we ended up with was a parody of Indiana Jones. <laughs> and, but it works. But it works, right? But but it was like, uh, that's not what we set out to do. But in, in a sense, you know, because we went too big with our ideas and we didn't have the budget to match our ideas, uh, there was, it ended up being something that we didn't necessarily intend, but it worked out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you'll, as you put your producer out on, you'll contain yourself and it might change yeah. what you're doing. Well, we have uh, three more minutes. Anybody have any other last minute questions? Okay, bouncing off the Audacity, um, if you use Audacity to record, do you have any programs to like edit the recording? And this is for like podcasting. Mm. Yeah, uh, Adobe Audition again. Yeah, great Adobe tool. Audition is a great tool. It, it, it's it's extremely great user friendly. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. isotopes. Yeah. And you're saying that the whole Adobe package is 50 a month, but they just got addition. It's like 10 or $11 a month. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we pay $50 a month to get access to everything. 
But if you, if all you want is a subscription to Adobe Audition, they have specific. Yeah, yeah there, there are specific packages for what your needs are. Yeah. Our needs are we need everything. <laughs> <laughs> and the good thing, oh Jesus! And the good thing about it is, if you need to pay for something and it's work, you can write it off. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, GarageBand and Logic are also there if you're a Mac mm -hmm. user. Yep. Um, GarageBand's free, which is excellent, and uh, Pro Tools is another big one. Those what is a Mac? Yeah, Pro Tools. What is a Mac? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if you are using iOS or uh, Mac OS. Uh, <laughs> this thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of tools. Yes. <laughs> no, yes. A lot of tools. This was what's in your bad budget. And, and, and feel free to message us. You know, I'll, I'll, we'd be happy to, to give you a list of what we use. Yeah, the, it, they're called DAWs, Digital Audio Workspaces. So there's a bunch out there. Those are just a few of them. Uh, well, I guess that we're just got one last minute. Let's, so I'll go ahead and say, um, before we sign off, can we get everyone's name again? And um, pitch what you're working on or what your socials are. All right. So Rita and Jason De La Torre, we are transmissions from Atlantis Entertainment. We have two fiction podcasts, uh, Continuum Force, which is like Stargate meets Doctor Who. It is family friendly. Uh, we have Vampires of Whitechapel, which is not family friendly. <laughs> uh, we also have a new fiction uh, podcast coming out uh, early next year called The Psalm 23 Mysteries. Wow. Uh, which is uh, written by our best friend. She's a New York Times bestselling author. It's her series. Uh, and it's it's going to have a big body count. Yep. And, and, <laughs> and we also have an animated series that we're working on called Star Mage. So, and we have ribbons, guys, so if anybody wants ribbons. Hey. <laughs> uh, my wife slash producer and myself are uh, doing pre-production on a uh, romantic comedy. I'm going to shoot in Birmingham. Uh, but I'm also got, uh, she's one half of Trek Expertise, a YouTube channel. If you're a Star Trek or science fiction person, it's a whole YouTube channel full of video essays. And then uh, I'm one half of a podcast called Wiki Surfer, which is all about the rabbit hole of falling down the link after link after link on Wiki Surfer. But we tell <laughs> the stories using like cinematic sound design. Uh, and it's fun to check it out. Well, once again, I'm Dana Morgan. Uh, photography side, you can find me at Danique, D-A-N-I-Q-U-E, events um, on social media platforms. Um, Moana Nui, Moana, like the movie, Nui, N-U-I podcast on all social media platforms and um, audio streaming um, platforms also. And the BOP um, the podcast also on all social media platforms that you can uh, tune in and watch their upcoming things. Uh, like I said, I'm working on part two to a video game right now um, that we're in, in the midst of recording and a lot of other things behind the scenes. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, again, my name is Omega Jones. I'm Critical Bard, uh, like critical, like critical success or fail and Bard music um across all social media channels it's a tumblr um i am what am i doing how about the next panel in this room <laughs> about neurodivergency uh and and, and and gaming um and then at 8 30 i'm going to be in the sheraton grand ballroom doing some D, D uh with a lot of folks including carl grimes from the walking dead which is just nice. uh, uh, so that'll be fun uh other than that uh, yeah i'm a, a professional twitch streamer you can catch me playing a lot of dead by daylight or makeup or having conversations about really important topics all stuff just check out my socials i do way too much but it's great <laughs> And I'm Anthony Vito at Anthony Vito underscore on Twitter. Feel free to send me a DM. I always love to help people out if anyone has any questions. I want to thank Blueberry, uh, the podcasting hosting site, as our sponsor. Uh, feel free to rate the panel. Tell us how great we did. Yes. Yes. Preferably five stars. Yes. And then follow us on Twitch at, at DC Digital Media. And also the official, um, uh, official charity of DragonCon is Open Hand. So please donate if you can. Thank you for coming. And have a great rest of your DragonCon. Thank <laughs> you.